So, so you know, this lesson is really going to deal, I mean, it, it, it's kind of dealing with Isaiah or Yeshiyahu 43, 11. I'm going to be mostly reading out of the scripture version. Um, also, we're going to be diving into like the uh, the Hebrew lexicon. Uh, and so, but I'll, you know, all these things are posted right on here. So 4311, and this is going to be out of the TS 2009, the scripture version, 2009 version. So a lot of people are getting, uh, you know, you know, using the scripture, say, well, yeah, it's no other savior. And this verse is 100% true. There is no other savior but Yahuwah. But I think what the confusion has came in is the leadership, and I blame the leadership. The leadership not really, you know, whether you, you want to say mores or whoever, nobody really breaking down what is the good news. What is, um, you know, what did the, what was happening in the early centuries? Or what does this verse even mean? Is that true? Is the Messiah idol? You know, is there other no set? Nobody's really explained the Elohim at. It's like this mystery that nobody, like, you know, likes to talk about. And I think um, as you get more intimate in, intimate with the Most High, He begins to reveal certain things to you. So we're going, so that's pretty much the basis of the lesson. And I'm going to try to, uh, you're willing to keep this pretty swift. So we're going to start off right here in Bereshit or Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Right, we're gonna start off with Bereshit, chap, uh, Genesis, chapter one, verse one. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna break down the first word of the scriptures, right? Because this is because we know, of course, I'm probably not telling you nothing new, that you know the the the, the, the Torah was written in Paleo Hebrew, uh, and then you know it, it evolved into other you know forms of scripts. But also, if you go back and research even further back than that, they had what they had, what they called the pictograph. So the pictograph, you know, evolved into the paleo, and then it keep, you know, it kept evolving into the modern day script, right? But we want to kind of focus on because each Hebraic letter has uh, a meaning behind it, and it's so infinite. The, the language is so infinite to where even letters are made up of other letters, and so it could go infinite amount of times in breakdown but we want to just focus on really the first two um, words in the scripture so I'm gonna pull up this in this a linear right so the first word is barashit right it is uh, from you know it's from right to left so it's a it's a bet a, a rush a left uh, shin yod and the ta right this is gonna be. This is. I'm telling you, man. I get, man. I, I I've been so hyped when uh, the eyes kind of laid on my my being and my mind to to, to share this, man. i so like I've been hyped for like the last uh, week almost, man. Like for real, for real. Uh, Cause it's just it just get me it just get me fired up, man. Like just about this. So let's look at it. So this first word, we're gonna break, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the first word and then we're gonna break it down to like the actual letters. So barashit, okay, that is Hebrews uh in the strongs, if you use the strongs, it's Hebrews 72, 25, right? Which means the first, the best, the chief, the best, the beginning, the chief, chief, um, the first in order of rank, the first fruits, the principle, right? Okay, now let's break this down. Now we're going to break the whole word down from the aspect of the pictograph and understanding that each one of these letters has a message. Because back in the day, just like if you look at hieroglyphics, they had pictures. So you could look at the pictures and see how the pictures were combining each other and see what it's actually saying. It's not like English. It's not like Western where when you put a when you put words together it has definite articles like this is what it means no hebrew was multifaceted and that's because it, it is the creator's language and he is multifaceted you can't really box him in and say well always oh, know is this you can't really box him in like that so when you look at this from that pictograph old point of view we're going to see that this first word is going to tell us a story and what story does it tell us? What is the first story it tells us? And this is the first word in the scriptures. This is the first word that the Ruach, 
the Ruach decides through, uh, through the words of the word by, uh, by and through the mind of, of, of our Father to use in the scriptures, <laughs> in the book, the first word to tell you what the, and, and, you, and you, what I've learned is everything with you who is strategic is nothing like he just don't do stuff. It's like everything is plotted. Like he plotted this out, you know, you know, so it, it, it is majestic in a sense. Now look at this. Okay, so we got bear sheep. We got the bet, rush, aleph, uh, aleph, shin, yod, ta, right? Now, the bet, of course, when you look at this old pictograph, guess what it is? It's a house, right? Let's go to the next one. The rush is the head was also the head, but it's also in the pictograph form. So it means the highest or the head, right? Um, Aleph is the first letter in the, the, the Hebrew scriptures. And it means the strength of or the power, right? So the strength of um, Shin, the old picture is a set of teeth. So with, te with, with teeth, you consume or you destroy stuff because you got to you got to grind up you feel you got to destroy it in order to consume it right the 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 yod or the yod is a hand so you see this right here it's a hand of the most high and then the ta so the ta is the last letter and the ta right here we see is two beams across Kind of giving you a symbol of the cross. Now, a lot of people get weirded out by this, but what you got to remember, and 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 some people get like really really scary, but with this lesson, you can't be scared. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the thing about it is, is all like most, pretty much like let's say like a lie. A lie comes from a, a, a spinoff of the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. In a sense, the 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 ta is in a sense, a, you know, a version of a cross or like an X, right? Or two beings put together. You know, I know that you know people use you know say, well, though, that's a pagan word. You say cross, but the fact of the matter is, it's 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 in our modern day English terms, it's a cross, right? Uh, right. So now, when you put this together, remember, it's like hieroglyphics, or it, it you know. And I use that word so you can get an understanding of it. So the house of the head or the highest strength. So the house of the highest or the head strength shall be consumed or destroyed by his hand. By his own hand at that matter. On what? On the stake. So, from a Hebraic standpoint, we're not using Western. So, so if, if I was, you know, however many back years ago that they were, you know, they understood the the the, the pictograph, I would see this and be like, oh, okay. This word, it don't, not only does it say the beginning, and it gives that context of the beginning, because that of the vocabulary of that but it also inside this word it says the house of the head or the highest strength or L shall be consumed or destroyed what? by his hand by his own hand on the stake mm. so right there it gives you this is the first word that the, the, the most high chooses to choose. So that means that, you know, it's kind of like, a, a um, you know, you know, I'm into movies and stuff like that. When you write, one of the things that is understood in, in writing circles is the, 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 the very first things that you um, are portraying and allowing to uh, uh, um, be released are the most important things. So the most important word that the scriptures will be built on is Barashit because it is the it is the foundation. Now this is where it gets interesting. 
Um, well, we're gonna we're we gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Let's no, I'm not get ahead of myself. Okay. Now, this is where I get interested. Now, um, here's the thing: is Barashi. Now, a lot of let's say scriptural scholars say it's interesting that, like I said, everything Yahuwah does is plotted, right? It's interesting that he uses the first, the second letter in the Hebraic alphabet. Because, you know, and they say that it's possible that, you know, Aleph is sometimes, they say, a, a, you know, a silent letter in, 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 in some manners. So it's interesting that the, the second letter is used first and the silent letter is invisible. Because we know a house, a bet, right? A house, a bet, bat is built off of what? You got to have a foundation. So what is the foundation? And when you put Aleph and bet together, what do you get? You get Ab, which is what? Father, right? But the now here's now now we're gonna take the we're gonna take the bigger word. So we got the message. The message of the first word is Barashit, the beginning, the chief. Uh, uh, the, the head, the first fruits in the beginning, but on on another on another level, it means what we just said, right? That the house of the head or the highest one, uh, or the highest strength, right, shall be consumed or destroyed by his hand or his own hand um, on the top, on the stake, right? Interesting. Now let's break that word down to individually. Now this is what's interesting because, like I told you, uh, the Hebrew alphabet is almost like a matrix. It's, it's levels within inside levels, inside levels, and I think it's so deep that we can never stop seeing how deep it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't even know if that made sense, but uh, that's what I'm trying to say. It's just, it's just it's just so deep. So now let's break this down even to smaller. Now he, the first letter he 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 decides to use is a bet, right? Now this is interesting. Is if this is a first letter, this means a lot to him. That he would he would he would use this as the first letter to reveal to his people that would eventually read this word thousands and thousands of years later. That being us and people that came before us. He decides to use his letter. And we just said that bet is a house. But we didn't define that also bet is also a house, but who lives inside the house? Inside the house is what? If you have a house or let's say a home, right? You have a family. So the first thing that he decides to talk about is a house, but also a family. Because we know there's there's no house without you know, a one person is not a family. A one person is not a house. It's, it, 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 it's two. And we know that by the fact that Bet comes after Aleph, which is this, and Bet is the second letter. So that shows you that a family starts at what? Two. What is, what is two? It's either, it's a father and a mother, right? Now this is where it's going to get really, really interesting. <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. So he starts with the bat, which is the house, which is the family, right? Now, now, this is what's interesting. When we look at the first uh, family, who was the first family that we know of? We know it was Adam. Now I'm going to show you this is because this blew my mind because Yahuwah is strategic. He's strategic in everything he's doing. Like he, it's parables, right? So now check this out. Now remember everything we just said. We talked about how the Aleph was first, and then it went from the first. That's the first letter, which is number one. Then it multiplied into the bet because it was silent you didn't really you didn't really 
see it and it had no it, it almost had no origin right because it was it was invisible right it was hidden it was hidden from us in the scriptures as we see in Bereshit the Aleph was hidden from us right so now we get to the bet which is two which we know a family starts with two which is what a father and a mother right now this is what this is where it get interesting um, now let's go to Bereshit 221 so Yahuwah Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on the man and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place and the rib which Yahuwah Elohim you say Elo, you know of course it's Elohim without the vowel pointings but you know right here it's it's uh, Elohim uh, had taken from the man uh, had taken from the man and he made into a woman and brought her to the man and the man said this is now bone of my bone flesh of my flesh this one is called woman because she was taken out of man Woo! now this is where this is where it gets heavy this is where it gets heavy so we just talked about now remember let's rewind this back I mean it's, it's, it's very elementary but we got to run it back because as one of my eyes say it's, it's, it's light but heavy so Yahuwah takes the man um, and you know there, there, there are you know we're not going to get into the, the rib thing but basically he reaches inside of Adam and pulls out the feminine part of Adam because the woman had already she had to already exist with inside Adam because he pulled her out of him and this is what's deep okay so we talk about the first part Ooh, I'm hyped right now okay so look so we talk about the first part of this um, now I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna tell you what this is but you're gonna you're gonna be able to see it yourself um, now this is the first family this is the first what do you call it uh, bet right this is the first bet because and, and Adam which is interesting his first his first letter in his name is of course Aleph right but we are seeing we are seeing a parable right now happening why are we seeing a parable because if we go to Genesis 126 let's pull this up Genesis 126 and Elohim said let us make man in our image according to our likeness Woo! now check it and Elohim, Elohim said let us make man in our image according to our likeness oh man so everything that he is doing with Adam and Hawa is according to the likeness in the image of the Most High Elohim now he said now now check this 126 says and Elohim said Elohim let's break that word down it means mighty power which is interesting it is a more collective term than just saying uh, you know just like when you see in another scripture say you shall not worship no other Allahim and that that means you know that that is you know that word is kind of um, multifaceted because it also you know it's it, it's a it can be used as a singular term but it's also can be used as a plural term right so you have a situation where what we're seeing now unfold with Adam and Hawa is in according to the image and likeness of Elohim right so now check it so we see that Adam and Hawa are the first bet now we just read in Genesis let's go back we just read in Genesis 1 1 that the first letter used is a bet so he he deals with the family first which we know according to this once Adam in 2 23 seen the woman and he said this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh this one will call one man because she was taken out of man this is a parable and this and I believe this is a parable going back to what we just read in Genesis 1 1 even with that first letter of the first family and we're gonna and how do we know that line upon line precept upon precept okay let's go to let's go to uh, 
Proverbs chapter 8. Okay? So Pro Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, and we're going to start We're going to start with verse 1 and I'm going to skip. It says, Does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice? Right? So pause on that. Does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice. Now, let's pause on that. Okay, does not wisdom. Let's look up this word wisdom real quick. Let's look up this word wisdom real quick. Right? Wisdom. Does not wisdom. Right? You see it right there. Right? It means... Wisdom, skill, administration, shrewdness, wisdom, prudence, right? Skillful, wit, right? This is Hebrews 24:51. Kahakma. Does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice? Right? Now, what's interesting is in a feminine text right here it says does understanding lift up her voice and the writer puts that because in the context in the context of this it is used in a feminine sense and so it is talking about a a feminine Power, a feminine power that is called wisdom. Now let's look at this word wisdom. Let's break this word wisdom down because this is a very interesting word which you're going to understand and it's all going to make sense now. And, and, and I wasn't actually even going to go here, but um, wisdom right here. You see it. Now look, check this. Now I'm going to read this because I had this from my notes. Wisdom. Uh, Kahakma is the mother of the righteous. Wisdom is the feminine power of Yahuwah, a mother. Look at the word wisdom, Kahakma, in Hebrew. Uh, uh, chet, which means a wall, a fence, separation. Kaf. Uh, remember, every Hebrew letter has a meaning behind it. The palm, a hand to open. Uh, mem, water, womb. Hey, to behold. Do you see the pattern? See, now we're going to put it together so we can see that each word tells us a story. Now, check this. The, the, um, there, is a, there is a sack, right, in a mother that separates the baby from the outside. Uh, the hand of the Most High opens. Um, we know, according to the scripture, that the, 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 the hands of the Most High opens and closes the womb, right? So he opens it, and water comes forth. Um, you know, when somebody, when a woman is pregnant, they'll say, "Oh, well, her water broke." It's because that that sack that was separating the baby from the outside world had broke, and there and therefore, uh, after that which the water breaks, you shall behold a child. Right. So now we see that 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 wisdom. In a sense of, I didn't make this up, you know what I'm saying? In the sense of what we just seen of chet, kaf, mem, hey, that when you look at that in the in the pictograph form, it gives you a sense of what we just said. That there is a separation in which something that wisdom keeps, that wisdom keeps and it holds that uh, once it is released, um, it is released and the water is broken. Therefore, you shall behold 
something. You shall behold and uh, you shall behold something. So that is what uh, Hakma is telling us. So when we're reading this, you got to understand somebody that's deep into the Hebrew culture back in the day, they, they understand this. They're not coming at it from a Western standpoint. So they're understanding what this means. So wisdom, which is likened to a mother. That's why they say wisdom is something like a mother. Why? Why? Because they have that Hebraic understanding that it is, it, it is the likeness of a womb and holding something and it being able to be uh, 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 giving birth to something, right? Now, which is interesting, we're going to read the rest of this. Okay, now we're going to read the, we're going to read the rest of this and, and starting from 12, right? This is Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. I, wisdom, have dwelt with insight and I find, it says, and I find knowledge, foresight. The fear of Yahuwah is to hate evil, and I have hate, pride, and ignorance. The evil way, the perverse, the, and the perverse mouth. Counsel is mine, and wis, in sound wisdom. I am understanding, mightness is mine. By me, sovereigns reign, and the rulers make the righteous inscriptions. By me, princes, princes rule, and nobles, and all the judges of earth. I love those who love me. And, and those who earnestly seek me do find me. Riches and esteem are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold and fine gold, and my increase than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of the righteous, right, right ruling, to bestow substance on those who love me and to fill their treasures. You know, now, this is where it gets interesting. This is where it gets interesting. Which I want you to think about when, when we're reading this is think about what we just read in about Adam and Hawa, quote unquote Eve, and think about that being a parable of Barashik, but in particular, the first letter used by the scriptures, by the word, the, the bet. The house, meaning two, which is a father and a mother, right? Now, now let's keep reading. Keep that in mind when you when when we're reading this. Yahuwah possessed me, the beginning of His way, as the first of His works of old. I was set up ages ago at first, before the earth ever was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs heavy with water, before the mountains were sunk, before the hills, I was brought forth, before he made the earth and the fields, or the first dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he ins inscribed the circle of the face of the deep, when he, he set, now that's an interesting verse too, when he inscribed the circle of the face of the deep. Why? Because you're going to see and this is, we're not going to go too much in this, but in Genesis and Bereshit 1, 2, you'll see the, you'll see where they use the Ruach or the, uh, you know, which is in quote, the Ruach HaKadosh. That is also a feminine context. So, so of course we know the scriptures don't lie, but whoever is talking right here, which is wisdom, uh, Chahakma, is telling the truth because we can go back in Genesis 1, 2 and see that the, that, that feminine power was there. Over the circle of the earth, when it says that the, the Ruach hovered over the face of the water, that was Chahakma, right there. We see that. And it says, in verse 28, And when he set the clouds above, and when he made the found, fountains of strong deep, and when he gave the sea its law, and so that the water could not transgress his mouth, and when he inscribed the fountains, uh, the foundations of the earth, and then I was beside him a master workman I was his delight day by day rejoicing before him all the time rejoicing in the world his earth and my delights were with the sons of men and now listen to me you children for blessed are those who guard my ways listen to the discipline and become wise so you do not refuse it blessed is the man who listens to me watching daily at my gates waiting at the posts of my doors for whoever finds me loves life and obtains favor from Yahuwah 
but he who sins against me injures himself. All those who hate me love death. Now, which is interesting, let's call this, I just, this just hit me just now. For whoever finds me, finds life and obtains favor from Yahuwah. Now, which is interesting, pause. Because that sounds very, very familiar to this verse. This, found, this sounds very, very familiar to Proverbs 18.22. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from Yahuwah. It's almost, it, it's almost identical in the phrasing and obtains favor from Yahuwah. Wow, okay, so whoever finds Chahakma, which is a, a, a personified as she or feminine power, or mother, we just seen about the womb and everything, also personified as a wife, right? Um, this is very interesting. Now, this is not this. Is, we're we're all based on the scriptures right here. This is no like, oh, let's go to this website, let's go to this. No, this is all on the scriptures. And so people, some people get weirded out and they get nervous. But no, we we all right here. We just seen identical. What we begin to see now. Um, what we begin to see now is that bent because when Yahuwah says something he really means what he said so he said that he was going to make man according to his uh, image their own image and likeness right so we just see in the bet in the house the two so basically in layman terms we've seen that and we just read that Chahakma just said that she, this feminine, you know, power, and I want to get it correct because, you know, I want to use my words correctly because people say, oh, you said that. No, I didn't say it. I just said what, I said what the word said. It said, of, it said it's a feminine context. So we are seeing that Chahakma is placed in the bet that is in the first word. And we're going to understand this. <laughs> it's going to be this is this is this is this is heavy. So Chahakma is placed because it just it just said right here. Uh, according to what the scripture said, it said that she was placed. She was in the beginning, right at the beginning. And we just seen this parable of what he did with Adam, right? Where he reached inside of Adam and. Pulled the feminine part of Adam out. So in this house of Bet, that is in the beginning, that the Aleph was invisible, we get to the Bet and we have two. So basically, we have Alahim. Let's break this down. So we have Alahim, which is a masculine, right? Which is the dominant power. And we have a feminine power, which makes up the Bet. Say that one more time. So Alahim. That we see, because remember when we read, let's go back to it, when we read Genesis chapter 1, and notice, you got to notice, sometimes it's, sometimes it's what the word says and also what it didn't say. So when you read Genesis 1, 26, it didn't say, it could have used Ab. The, the, the Ruach could have used Ab, or it could have used Yahuwah. But in, in the context, it said Elo, Elohim, the mighty power, because I believe that 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 gave you a context of not only the masculine power, right, but it also gives you Chahakma, the, the 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 feminine power of Allahim, the bet, the house, that in the beginning of that bet, there they get they get to hear and they say, okay, Allahim said. Let us make man according to our image. So basically, Elohim makes man according to his image. What was in the likeness of what had already been. It's not a rant. Because I used to always wonder about that. Okay, well, if it's just masculine, if it's all just masculine powers in Shemaim, then where the heck does, you know, I mean, what, what's, what's, the, what's the whole deal about women? Like, it doesn't make sense, you know? But yes, so the, so the image... And there's no really way to explain it even better, you know, but the image and the likeness of the Most High that he showed us with Adam. So we see that Adam being the likeness of Elohim 
was created. So basically, let's break this down. Let's just say in a comparison, a likeness in the image is compar not comparable to on a sense of standard and elevation of stature, but in a comparison of a parable, right? So in a parable, however, Allah, however the family of Allahim was set up, basically Allahim was like, well, I'm going to create a comparable family in the likeness of that on earth. So when they understand this, this dynamic of a family, they're going to understand more about the creator. So he takes Adam, which is like the Aleph at the beginning, that was invisible, and he and, and, and he, he he multiplies it into two, and now it's a bet. It's a it's a it's a masculine and a feminine. It is a uh 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 you know in a sense parable parable wise it is a husband and a wife, it is a father and a mother. Now this is gonna make more sense. Okay? And this may be have to be like a part two. <laughs> Cause I'm pushing like an hour right now. Um but hallelujah. Um we move. Them. Okay, so now let's check it. Now check it. Bear a sheet. Now the bear a sheet, and we just talked about the bet. So we established the fact that the likeness in the image was according to what we just read. Now let's read some more scriptures so we can so we can um, just, just just follow up so we can have more witnesses on wisdom. Let's 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 read Proverbs. 1 8. And these are just scriptures so you can just see more witnesses that, you know, because sometimes people just use one scripture and say, oh, see? Let's go to Proverbs 1 8. Proverbs 1 8. This is what it says. My son, heed the discipline of your father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother. Interesting. Right? Let's go to Proverbs 4 and 5. Proverbs 4 and 5. It says, get wisdom, get understanding, uh, do not forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not leave her, and let her, it says, and let her guard you, and love her, and let her watch over you. Interesting. The beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom, and all of you are getting, get understanding. Oh, let's, let, let's, let's read verse 8, just for the heck of it. Exalt her and lift her up, and she brings you esteem when you embrace her. Interesting. Okay. Because um, it's interesting that Yehovah would say, honor your mother and father. So in a sense, he's not only saying your earthly father, but he's saying, uh, 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 and... How do I say? If Chachma is likened to a mother and likened to the Ruach HaKadosh, let's say that. And we know Av, that we have to honor our Father, our Heavenly Father. It is saying on a higher level, on a higher frequency, that it's talking about that. Because you'll see that when we talk about blaspheming, that'll take, the, that'll take blaspheming the Ruach to a whole other level. We're not maybe going to get there. But now you get to see, like, okay, when you start doing that, that's a whole other level. Um, this is just a, 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 some quick notes right here. We know that the characteristics of a mother is nurturing, uh, manifesting, and comforting counsel. Uh, this is the feminine aspect of Alahim that we've seen in the bet. The house, the two, right? Now, this is interesting. I just want to pull these out because, well, I actually don't want to pull these out yet because I want to get to the I want to get to the next letter. Now, check it. Rush. We just seen we broke the word down. We said it was the head, right? Boom. There you go. The head. So, let's 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 pick the graph it up. The uh, the house head, or if we said in another term, the head of the house. Ooh, now we now we about to get well, we about to get really we about to get really deep. So 
the head of the house or the house head. So we talked about the, the, the invisible letter that was, you know, that was before the, 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 the bet and the scriptures decided to use the second letter, the house, the family. But then it goes into, then he tells us, then now he's telling us a story about this house that has a head to it. The highest of it, you know what I'm saying, the head, because we know that the pictograph was a head. Okay, so this house has a head. Interesting. Let's look at this. That same kind of word, or let's say those same two first letters, are very interesting, the bet and the rush. So from the, the question, so the question is from a Hebraic standpoint, is who is this head of the house they're talking about? And let's assume that we don't know, right? Who is this head of the house? What we would have to do is we would have to know the scriptures well enough to find other identical situations in the scriptures which can kind of give us a context and clue of, of the mystery of this, this head of the house. Who is the head of this bet? Who is, who, is, who is this? Who is this? We just read the first two letters. We don't know. We don't know nothing from Adam. I mean, that's how we're coming in right now. So let's so let's go to so let's go to Psalms 118, verse 22. Psalms 118, 22. That the stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That's what it says. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, let's look at it. The stone that the builders rejected has become the rush. The head stone. Ooh. So hold up. Let's give this context. So we just seen, this is how deep the Hebraic scriptures are. And only the rule I can show you this. So we just so we had a question. We had a question was who was this head of the head of the bet? And we and we just seen that the stone that the builders rejected has become the rush cornerstone the head cornerstone so this head is now connected to a stone so hold up so now this head is now a stone i mean that's that's where we at that that, that in, in this investigation series that's where we at so there's there's there, there's something about a stone that the builders or whoever the builders are have rejected and then it has become the headstone going all the way back to whatever this story was about the head of the bet okay now we get somewhere so we got the stone okay what is this now we got another question it happens more questions okay now what is this stone that the builders rejected what is this stone now we got now we got it now we got to look into this and see okay well now let, let's 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 look into this what is this stone now, um, now let's look up because the English uses cornerstone, but it, it you know, uh, which is a good phrase. But let's look up this word cornerstone. The cornerstone definition: a stone that forms the base of the corner of a building, joining two walls. Hmm. Oh, let's read that back. A stone that forms the base of a corner of a building joining two walls so there's two walls that need to be joined together in which this cornerstone is going to join them together this is where we're at in this investigation okay and i'm a i'm a let's say i'm a a a builder a uh a a, a, a you know a person that's skilled in that okay this cornerstone that I'm putting is going to join these two together, so it's an intermediary. It's it's a it's a it's 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 something that holds this together because without that, these things can't be uh, joined together. Okay, so now we now we get somewhere. Okay, so we know about the cornerstone. Okay, but what is this stone though? What is this stone they're talking about that the builders are rejected? I I, I don't I, I don't get it. So let's because Yahuwah will drop hints. He, you know, sometimes that's that's what jams people up because they think he gonna say it like just out. But it's it's is I think the reason why he does parables 
is 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 because it tests it tests the mind it tests the spirit because if you really want to know the truth you will you will ask seek and knock for the truth to get past these the the, the these dark sayings and 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 and, and, and parables and, and, and when I mean dark I mean dense like it's heavy and you really can't just get it on the surface you got to really really want it um and, and so it, it keeps people out of the fence that don't really want it because if you don't really want it and you're gonna sell it for something else we ain't gonna get it so here's the thing let's look at this let's look at this stone because we want to look at this same word stone that's been used and I never showed you that that word but here it is right here for stone so we see it it's Hebrews 68 Ahabim Ahabim Ahaban right okay so let's look at it let's 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 go back and, and look at some of some of these other scriptures that feature this same stone so we can get an identification of what is what is being talked about here let's go to Genesis 28:11 Bereshit Barashit 28:11 And he came upon a place and stopped overnight for the sun had set and he took one of the stones that of that place and he put his head on it and lay down in that place to sleep Okay let's let, let's 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 investigate cuz maybe they just saying this let's investigate what this is this stone was is it the same Hebrew word 2811 28 it's the same Hebrew word I have been I have been same Hebrew word okay let's skip to let's skip to 28, 18. And Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put at the at his head, and set it up standing as a column, and poured oil on top of it. Ooh. So now, so check it. But let's 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 rewind this back. Let's rewind this back. Um, and we don't even really have time to get into Jacob Ladder. That's a whole nother actual lesson, right? But what's interesting, what's interesting is he pours oil on top of this stone. Now, let, let, now what's interesting about it is oil from a from a priestly standpoint when you pour oil on something you anoint it when you anoint something uh what, what what does david say david says he anoints my head with oil right so when you anoint somebody's head with oil that is that is the same word as the anointed one or 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 the mashiach right so he anoints this stone remember we just said that that, that, that somebody that, that david wrote by inspiration of the Ruach HaKadosh, he said that people who building, they reject this stone. So he knew something that, you know, or he even knew something with the Ruach. Of course, the Ruach gave it to him. But now we're seeing that this stone that Jacob seen, he poured oil on it. Yaakov, Yashrael. He pours oil on it to anoint this thing, this stone, that's symbolically of something. What is it symbolically of? Okay. What well, Then we said, what did he call it? He called it the house of Bethel. Um, verse 22. Um, he says, Then this stone, which I have said, standing column, shall be Elohim's house. So if you don't know, and this will be in, 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 in a lesson if we, if, if we did it on the, um, the uh, on, on this, a lot of people say that where he had that stone, where he laid down, was, was, was of course, Bethel. Which will later be uh, where you know in the vicinity of where the temple was, where they were building because they seen the the, the messengers going up and down uh, Jacob's ladder, Yashrael's ladder. So this is very interesting that 
the stone that was anointed, right, is said to be the very place to where Bethel or the house of El, the house of the Most High, which goes back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, is where this house will be built. So it's something, so this stone is symbolic. And from the context, as we're looking at it, from what David said, from what Daoud said, to what's happening here, it seems to be that this stone is a personification of somebody. Because we just seen that it said it about the head and and, 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 and the word bear sheet in Genesis 1 1. But now we're seeing that he anoints this, he, he anoints the head of this stone with oil in the place. And we know, guess what? If you look at a context in the Torah, guess who else, guess who other heads were anointed when it came to the house of El or the temple? The high priest. Right? So you had the high priest would, would you know, would be anointed with oil and, 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 and the Levites, right? So now we so now we see that this this stone all this stuff is happening is this stone is in the context in the vicinity of a priest, right? Now it makes even sense because we said that the cornerstone, or let's say that we read that the cornerstone was a joining of two things, which we know that the priest would join the people. That's what it meant, you know, Kahan, it was to draw near. They would join the people to Allahim. Because they was an intermediary, they were that they were they were the cornerstone, wasn't it? Wasn't the wasn't the high priest and the priest the cornerstone from the people to Allahim? Because they were they they interceded in the middle. Oh, and this is from the Hebraic context of what we're saying that all this stuff is making sense now to us. Like, oh, I get it, I get it. The cornerstone. That is this stone personified as somebody is connected to a priest that is able to connect people, connect the people with Allahim. So keep in mind, still don't forget about Barashit and that rush that we talked about that's connected to what David said. And we're going to we're going to connect more stuff to it. OK, so we're done with that. We're done with that now. Let's look at something else. So we, we were talking about David. Let's 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 get more on to David. Let's get more on to David. Oh, this, now this this is heavy. Oh man, and, and it's it's amazing. And, and a pause right here. It's amazing sharing this, man, because even now, you know, the Ruach is bringing some things, uh, uh, uh you know, to me. Um, now let's t let's go to First Samuel. First Samuel seventeen and forty. Now remember. David was the one who wrote the Psalms, so he, he he's the king of Israel. You know, he was the king of Israel, and he's intimately he's intimately acquainted with uh, our history and you know all the secrets that were you know revealed to Yaakov and our, the patriarchs. He knows these things. So remember, we got this mysterious thing about the stone, which is personified as a person, right? Um, and he knows that because we'll see some other scriptures that talk about the stone. But now check this. Now he's about to kill Goliath. This is 1 Samuel 17, uh, 40. And he took his staff. He took it. He took his. He and, and he took his staff, staff in his hand, and chose for himself five smooth stones from the wadi, and put them in a shepherd's bag, and the pouch he had had. And his, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Of course, we know the Philistine he's talking about is Goliath. Now, what's interesting, let's check it out. Let's see. This is the same word? Boom. It's the same word as this stone. So we're following, we're tracking this, this stone in the scriptures. We're tracking this stone. So now, this stone, we ain't going to read it. You can read it on your own time, because you know about the story. So he throws one rock at him. He don't he don't throw five. He got five, but he only need one. And a lot of a lot of people say that it was other giants. And if they would have tried him, he would have killed them with the other with the other four. You know what I'm saying? So he throws this stone at Goliath one time. 
through the power of Yahuwah and kills this man, cuts his head off. Very significant. Very significant that he stole a stone for that matter. He could have just, he could have got a, a sword and cut his head off and just ran up to him and just cut his head off just like that. But he decides and Yahuwah moves on him to throw a stone. And then this is the same writer that says that the stone that the builders rejected has become the rush, the head chief cornerstone, which goes back the rush being the Genesis bear sheep 1-1. The rush, the head of the house. So we are identifying that this head of the house, this rush, who is the head of the house, is also personified as a stone, is also connected to a priest because it's a, it's, it's a cornerstone which connects and all. We already talked about that. So what's interesting is he throws a stone at him. That, just that part. That he throws a stone at him. Why is that interesting? Because we're going to see, okay. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. And look, look, we all on this lesson right now. Because I, I want to break this. I want to just, just esteem you who are right now. Is we all on this lesson. We only went over two letters. We didn't even go to the second. We didn't even go to no other verse. We on, I mean, we went to other verses. But what I'm saying is we started out trying to explain <laughs> we are going over the first letter, the second letter, and the first word of the scriptures, and this is how in depth this, 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 this the word is, right? So let's go to chapter two. So look at this. So this is talking about an image. It was talking about, I believe it's uh, right here. It's the image of uh, like one of the one of the sovereigns. Right, because I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna start a little earlier, at 31. You, O sovereign, were looking on a great and saw a great image. This great image and its brightness. So this is when um, this is when Daniel was uh, breaking down an interpretation of something that um, one of the sovereigns had seen, an image. Um, so we're not going to get too much into that because that's a whole other thing. But at verse 31, it says, You, O sovereign, were looking on a, were looking on and saw a great image. This great uh, image and its uh, brightness, um, excellence, was standing before you and its form was awesome. This image's head was a fine gold, and his chest and arms were silver, and his belly with thighs were bronze, and his legs were iron, and his feet was partially iron and partly cl uh, clay. You were looking on until a stone that was cut out without hands, and it smart the image on its feet of iron and clay, and broke them into pieces. Oh! So this is the same Hebrew, same Hebrew word, Ahabim, the stone, Right? So this stone, just like the stone was thrown by David. So Goliath, in a sense, was a parable of this image, right? This giant that was smart and smart into pieces. And it and then of course David cuts the head off of it. But this image that they're talking about in chapter Daniel was was also foreshadowing the different uh you know evil empires. Right, that this stone, this cornerstone, this 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 head cornerstone, rush, smart. So we so we following it. So now we got a picture. Like yo, okay, yeah, definitely this cornerstone, or this 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 rush, uh, a beam is definitely personified as a person. I mean, we 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 can we can make that case now. We got enough evidence. To make that case that it ain't just talking about oh we well, you know some some just stone because because David even showed us like that's some kind of that's some kind of parable like what is going on okay so and let, let's go to 45 I think we can skip to 45 245 because you saw this that the stone was cut out by the mountain without hands and it crushed the iron and the bronze and the clay and the silver and the gold. The great Allahi 
has made it known to the sovereign what shall be done after this. The dream is true and its tr interpretation is trustworthy. So he was talking to Nebuchadnezzar. Now, now check it out. This gets even more deeper because we can't, we can't, um, so look, now, 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 now here, right here, we about, now right here is about to be interesting because we about to get the identity of this stone. We about to get the identity of this stone right here. Now check it. This is 244. It says, and in the days of these sovereigns, the Allahi of the heavens shall set up a rain which shall never be destroyed, nor the rain passed on to other people. It crushes and puts an end to all these rains and shall stand forever. So the great Allah is going to set up a kingdom, a reign, which we know it can't be David's reign. Because I'm talking about in the present time. In the present time, because the present time of David's reign is not happening right now. The, 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 this world is, is, is controlled by the devil. Shatan, the great dragon. It, it's, it's, it, it's ruled by him, the rule of the world. So there has to be a future reign that shall come, right? So here's the so so there has to be a part, there has to be a rush. There has to be the intermediary, the cornerstone. So the cornerstone is a person. Basically, we just said it. We just said it. Let's go to Daniel chapter seven. This is one, and then we going then we gonna then we're gonna progress into uh some other stuff and get back to the get back to the to the business. Okay, so Daniel chapter seven. Daniel chapter seven, verse thirteen. So he has a vision. Daniel has a vision. So remember, Daniel's already in chapter two. He's already he already understood that Nebuchadnezzar and all these rains that's going to be in the future. You know, yo, it's going to be crushed by this stone. This stone is going to crush it. Uh, just like how David killed Goliath, right? Um, this stone is going to crush it. It says, but this is what Daniel's seen, though. Check, check out what Daniel's seen. He said, I was looking at the night visions and saw one like the son of Enosh coming in the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him before him. And he was given rulership and precious reign, to all the peoples of the nations and languages should serve him. His rule is everlasting rule, which shall not pass away, and his reign that shall not be destroyed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. So let's back that up. Let's back it up to what he's seen about the stone, right? So he said in 244, it says, in in the days of the of the uh it says, in the days of these sovereigns. The Elohim of the heavens shall set up a rain which shall never be destroyed, nor the rains pass to other people, and it crushes and puts all these rains uh, into all these rains, and it shall stand forever. So, this is a future thing to happen because we know right now that Yahweh ain't uh, 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 did that now. It ain't no other rain on it, it, the, the only rains. It, it's still that never that that stone has not crushed uh, all the rest of these kingdoms. That still are existing. So we know this is a future thing. And then, and, but what's interesting is we get our answer right here. If you didn't believe that the stone was a person, then you get it right here because it says, and to him was given rulership and the precious preciousness of the of a reign to all the people's nations and languages shall serve him. His rulership is everlasting rule which shall not pass away his reign, that which shall not be destroyed. So, boom, there you have it. The stone. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. The stone that the builders rejected, the rush, the cornerstone, and the word bearer sheet after the house. So let's go back to it. We're going to replay it back. So this house, which has of Elohim, which has the masculine 
power and also the feminine power of Elohim has a head of the house. This head of the house was the stone we identified, which is him who was going to set up this king. It said that he was given. He was given authority. So if someone gives somebody authority, that means that someone greater than them gave them that authority. So someone greater than this head gave the head the authority to have rulership and set up this kingdom, the, the rock, the stone. So the head of the house. Now, what's interesting is the first thing that Yahuwah decides to tell us is that he has a house, which is two, Elohim, masculine, feminine power, but there's a head of the house, of that house, right? The, the rush. Now here's what's interesting. So we know, we and we identified that this head of the house, the rush, is going to set up a kingdom and he's going to be given authority from uh, the Aleph that was silent. The, 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 the Av, right? The father. So this is interesting. So we only got to the first two letters and we seeing right now that, okay, so, so, so let's cap this up. Let's take it to another level. So now, this head of the house, uh, the bar, right? The bar, right? Now, now, this is what this is. This is, this is a sidebar. This is a sidebar, but I want, but I want to show you this so you can see how magnificent Yahuwah is in breaking down stuff to us is in Deuteronomy chapter 17 right it talks about people getting why don't people stoned to death nobody never brings that up yeah well that's, that's, a, that's a tough way to go out man to get stoned to death but we just seen that the stone is symbolic of, of the rush of the bet that is going to crush all the wickedness in the kingdoms, right? That, that, that vision that uh, the, the sovereign saw with Daniel, right? And then, De and then David kills Goliath with a rock. So there, there, there is a significance in getting stoned to death, right? Um, just like it says in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, when you start at, let's say, if you start at um, verse 2, it says, When there was found in your midst any of your cities which Yahuwah, Yahuwah has given you, and it, it says that a man and a woman does not, does what is evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, Yahuwah, and transgress his covenant, and has gone to serve other mighty ones and bow down to them, or to the sun, or the moon, or to any host of the heavens, which I have not commanded. And it shall be made known to you. Um, and you have heard it, and you have searched diligent, and see, it is true. And a matter is confirmed. Um, that such is an abomination has been done in Yisrael. Then you shall bring out uh, to your gates that man or woman who has done the evil of the matter and you shall stone him to death that man or that woman so somebody was stoned to death symbolically we know the stone is this person who's going to set up the kingdom we know it is this, it is it is the the, the 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 rush okay so we so we established a couple of things i'm not going to repeat it again but we established a couple of things about the head of the house we established about the rush uh, we established about all that. Now, so the head of this bet, right? Because you just seen a you just seen a a a, 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 a family, right now. You just seen the masculine, the feminine. Then you got the head of the house, right? 
already given us a story. Then it goes into the Aleph. So let's draw a picture real quick. I'm gonna just look, look at this picture. So check this out. Check this story out. So you got this house, right? You got a father and a mother, and they got a son. If you come knock on the door, who comes to the to the door? The head of the house, right? Whoever's in charge of that task, he's gonna come to the door. Yo, what's up? So right here in this pictograph thing, we see that the head of the house of this bet is the same person as Daniel talking about that is the priest and all these other things that we went over. Um, he's connected to the Aleph. He's connected to Av, Av, right? So we're starting to see a picture that this is a this 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 person is an intermediary. We just talked about this the stone, the cornerstone, which connects two walls, right? We we just see we just heard about that. So the house, who's in the house? We talked about the Av, the father. We talked about Chachma, the uh, uh, feminine power of Allahim. That's in the house, right? But the Rush is the head of this house. He also lives in the house too, right? But he connects the Aleph, the strength, the power. He connects Allahim. So basically, we're starting to see that you can't even get in the house without getting through the head of the house. Hmm. Now, what's interesting is let 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 let's 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 quickly skip to the next word. In the beginning, Allahim. Notice notice it says Allahim, which is right here, the mighty power. Right? It also means messengers, gods of gods, but we know according to here this is Allahim. Bara. Now this is we're gonna keep this short because bara is a deep word. But what's interesting is that the first three letters of Barashi is repeated again in Bara. Right? Which is interesting. Because that's that's two that's that's a double witness. Okay, we gotta look at this word because this word is is, is telling us something. The bar, the bar is telling us bar, um, which is you know, which which you can couple that into Debraim, but that's a whole nother uh, 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 subject. But the head of the house of the strength. The head of the house of the strength. <laughs> the head of the house of the strength. So this head of the house, so this whole thing is talking about the head of the, it seems like, it seems like from from the Hebraic context of that, the 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 sign of letter Av, the I mean the the Aleph the Aleph in that Bet and the Av in this house seems to almost push in and in, 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 in exalt this rush. This is what it said, and, and, and it makes sense because when we just read Daniel, it said that this person, this head of the house, was given authority to have rulership. So they are putting him out there. They are putting they are, the house is, is is pushing him out there. They are exalting him to this to this status where they are pushing him out. So this head of the house, which the builders rejected. Is now the chief cornerstone, so he he is he is what the, the the foundation, the connecting. So now we get into another level, and this is what brings us home. So we see Bara. So the Barashi in the beginning, Allahim. Now, which is interesting, because Hebrew, you know, sometimes is it, not. Sometimes you can't put it in the time capsules because some you know this word might talk about. A thousand things and then we go back to this and it's going to give us a summary but regardless of it says in the beginning Allahim Barah 
So let's look at this word bara. It means to create, to shape, to form. Right here, it says to give birth. Right? So in the beginning, Allahim, the, 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 the house, the bet, the masculine and feminine power of Elohim does what? Gives birth, brings forth what? Look at this, the Aleph and Tah. So in the beginning, the masculine and feminine power of Allahim brings forth the Aleph and Tah, the beginning and the end. And that's multifaceted in itself because Aleph and Ta, Aleph being the first letter, Ta being the last letter, but also um, it also means the beginning and the end. But also on a third level, it also connects to a person. How do we know this? Because we know we don't just use one scripture. We know we we know it means something else. So let's let's look at it. How does it? How does we know it connect to a person? And, and a lot of Hebrew scholars would say, oh, it's an in indefinite article. It doesn't really mean anything. So you're telling me the Ruach would write something and it doesn't mean anything. And for the fact that the simple fact that it's the last and first level uh, 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 letters of the Hebraic alphabet, you're telling me it don't mean nothing? Yes, it means something. It means the totality of uh, time. Who was, who is, who is to come. Now check this. Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. This is what he says. He says, And I, sh and I shall pardon the house of Daoud and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of favor and prayers. And they shall look upon me whom they pierced. Let's pause. Now, and in, 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 let's look at this in the, in the linear. They shall look upon, look about upon the elephant whom they pierced. So this article that we see, and there's so many other scriptures that we can go over that's pr proven that the elephant is an actual person, uh, uh, in our sense of a word, entity. They shall look upon the the elephant tile whom they pierced. They shall look upon the elephant tile whom they pierced. So, it, so when we go back to when we go back to the beginning and we look at this, and it says in Genesis, in the beginning, the Barashit, Alahim, Bara, the elephant tile. So he brought forth the beginning and the ending. Not only that, he brought forth the actual physical or 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 invisible ruachs of the letters of all the alphabet you know alphabet gimel you know he brought forth all that but he also brought forth the person who is uh came forth out of out of the the union now this is going to get deep this is going to get heavy is a lot of people I just always wonder, okay, where, where do we get a, a husband coming together with a wife and being able to, and having a child and producing and, you know, they have sex, they have intercourse. Like, we know what that means to us. But how is it that, now check it, how is it that the Most High Elohim said that He made us in the likeness and he made us in the likeness, in the image of Elohim. Interesting. But we just, Kahagma placed herself in, in, in a context of a, a feminine power of Elohim in the beginning, in that bet. So we see that in the beginning, Barashi, Elohim, Bara, or gave birth to the elephant and we know that Chahakma gives birth, right? We know Chahakma gives birth. Uh, wisdom gives birth to the elephant Ta, and we just found out that elephant Ta is a person. 
which is connected to the the rush. Everything seems to be pointing. I mean, we ain't even got we ain't even got two words in, and and it's everything is screaming this rush, this head of the house, this 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 exalted one who uh, 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 is put out out front, put out out front, and he is given. We just read that he is given authority from off. Um, so what's interesting is now there it is. So this scripture is the birth of the elephant tie. And later, I know people who are watching this, they may not even believe in uh, the Buddha how to shot the New Testament. But you can read Revelation chapter 1 where it says that uh, the Messiah says that he is the elephant top. Which um, we didn't even, we haven't even used no uh, New Testament verses. But I want to show you, this is going to be, we're, we're going to step into something else when we get into the name, name Yahuwah. So now, so check it. So in the beginning, Elohim birthed the elephant tie. The, out of the house, out of the bet. The bet was birthed the elephant tie. This solves the mystery of about this person. Now, what's interesting is, let's get into this. What's interesting is, um, we just we just seen that the masculine power of Elohim and Chachma was in the bed, and Elohim gave birth to uh, the elephant top. and we know that everything that we seen in Genesis, according to Adam and Hawa, was a parable. Of the image and likeness of Elohim. What has happened now is we just identified through the two words we identified that there's a there was a family structure in a sense to where I can minds can understand it in the bet in that they had a rush and this rush is connected to the stone who's connected to the person who's going to be given authority who's connected to the cornerstone all this stuff. He's put out a front. He seems to be, from a standpoint of reading this story, he seems to be, you know, you know how you, you have like a brand or you have a basketball team or something and he's the face of it. That's what it seems like. He like this this rush is the the, the face of it. There's, there's, there's powers that, that are behind him. There's a power behind him that's given him his authority and gave birth. Because I always wondered, why does a man come together with, the, with 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 a wife and they have a children. Why why is that so symbolic to us? And why is that preached over and over in the story? Because because the scriptures is really just you know this love story about you know a man you know that had this girl and she you know she acting crazy and he trying to just you know straighten her up. You know what I mean? And he go and he basically get her back in the end. You know what I mean? So what you have that's what we seeing from this image this imagery that's being painted. Now the question is Isaiah 43 and 11 And sorry to leave you in suspense for so long But you know we had to go there 43 11 I, I am Yahuwah Besides me there is no savior Okay So now the question is well, A couple questions that we have Is what Does the name of Yahuwah mean? What does that mean? Because we assume that we know what the name of Yahuwah means, but what does it mean? Let's let 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 let's let's find out. I mean, um, the name of Yahuwah was was um, seen in Genesis, uh, but let's 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 go and. and and this is the place I want to go to. So, we want to see here, going from Abraham's day, 
that Abraham being the patriarch of our faith and talk so highly about that we want to see what was going on with the with with, with Yahuwah, right? Uh, so let's look at it. let's go to let's go to Genesis bare sheet chapter eighteen. Now check this. Genesis at chapter eighteen verse one. And Yahuwah. So this is the same Yahuwah that was we just read in Isaiah Yahshua forty three eleven. And Yahuwah appeared to him by the Timurbineth trees of Mahari while he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. Talking about Abraham. So he lifted up his eyes and he saw three men standing opposite of him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door and met them and bowed himself to the ground and said, Yahuwah. Okay, pause. So he calls a physical person who was in the form of a physical person. He calls him Yahuwah. The same Yahuwah that was in Isaiah 43.11. If I have found favor in your eyes, please do not Passed by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest with yourselves under the tree. And let me bring a piece of bread and, and refresh of your hearts. And then go on. For this is why you have come to your servant. And they said, they said, do as you have said. Right? So think about it. Now, check it. Now, a lot of people might say, well, oh, that wasn't really Yahuwah. It was a messenger. Okay. Well, let's go down to 1813. And Yahuwah said, so it gives you a context. So he, so Abraham called him in this conversation. He called him Yahuwah. Right? Now the scriptures say, and Yahuwah said to Abraham. He's right there in front of his face. Yahuwah said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? saying, Shall I have a child at an early age? Is there any matter too hard for Yahuwah? So, the, so, 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 the, so this person never really identifies himself as Yahuwah. He never says that he is Yahuwah out of his own mouth. But Abraham calls Yahuwah. The, man, the person doesn't check him. Then the, the scriptures say that Yahuwah said. So this is the same Yahuwah in Isaiah 43.11 and I'll keep going back to that because this is what people use that there is no other Savior so according to this scripture let's just say it plainly that Yahuwah can appear in physical form because he was right there in front of Abraham this is, this is not my saying this is, a, this is an observation of what actually just happened Yahuwah appeared in physical form right there in front of Abraham Abraham said it Yahuwah talked back to him okay so now, let's, 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 let's move on from there. Now, remember, now, now, if you're familiar with the story of Abraham, and you know, with the Lot, and you know, and all that stuff, and, you know, it came to a point where Lot picked some land, and, you know, the people was wicked uh, out there, Sodom and, you know, uh, Gomorrah. And so let's check it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 19. Now let's go let's go to this. So we know about the two messengers coming, we know about this story. But let's skip to this. 1913. Genesis. Bear sheet. For we are going to destroy this place. This is the messengers talking. Because the cry against them has grown great before the face of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah has sent us to destroy it. These are the two messengers. Now, now check it. This is what's interesting. <laughs> now, this is we just read this in chapter 18. We just read where Yahuwah came down with two other people. Remember, think about it. Two messengers came to Sodom and Gomorrah in the, in the evening. And Lot was sitting in the gate of Sof. Uh, of Sof. So, so it was three people. So it was, it was Yahuwah and two other people. Right? Um, 
according to what we know. You know what I'm saying? It could have been Yahuwah manifesting himself in three different people. Could have been two. So let's don't like leave that out there. And I know the context kind of says uh, they, but um, I mean anything is possible. You know, and I don't want to just step on that, on, go into that, go, go into that world. But um, but the the fact of the matter is, is that Yahuwah in the physical form was on Earth, right there, right, right, talking to Ab talking to Abraham. Now the next chapter, these two messengers all of a sudden appear, which they could have been part of the the, the, the two people that was with Yahuwah, right? Um, they say they're going to destroy the place. And they said that, that uh, it has come up before the face of Yahuwah to destroy it. If you go to verse 24, it says, And Yahuwah rained down sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from Yahuwah out of the heavens. And Yahuwah rained down fire and sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from Yahuwah out of the heavens. So we so just one chapter earlier, Yahuwah was just on earth. Remember that. He was just on earth talking to Abraham. And then the two messages came later uh, in the evening. But this is saying, almost in the context like there's two Yahuwahs. And Yahuwah rained down sulfur and fire from Sodom and Gomorrah from Yahuwah out of heavens. Let's look at the, let's look at let's look at the second verse, 25. So he overthrew the cities and all um, the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities were thrown to the ground. See what I'm saying? Because remember earlier. Abraham was like, yo, are you going to destroy it? Remember he was talking to Yahuwah like that? Um, and he told him to hate, you know, because Yahuwah wanted to tell him what he was about to do. Um, so, it's very interesting that there are two Yahuwahs. Now, it's interesting, why do you say, so we might, see, somebody might say, oh, you're just pulling that out of the hat. Okay, well, if there's not two Yahuwahs, then what, what about this prophecy? Let's go, to, let's go back to Zechariah. Let's go back to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. Verse 3. We're going to do first, first 3 first. And Yahuwah shall go forth and shall fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. So this scripture is talking about some kind of, you know, future day. Because remember, remember the stone has not destroyed this image because the kingdoms of the devil is still ruling the world. And that, that everlasting kingdom has not been set up yet. We know this. I mean, we could just look in the world. We know. We know this hasn't happened. But this is talking about a future day when all this will happen. Right? And in that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split into two, from the east to the west, a very great valley. And half of it, the mountain, shall move toward the north, half of it toward the south. Okay, let's skip to verse 9. And Yahuwah shall be sovereign over all the earth. Remember, that's already prophesied according to According to Daniel, we know that right here. I got a footnote that says Yahshua 24, 23, Daniel 2 and 44. So we already know that 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 Yahuwah is going to be sovereign of all the earth because why he was given authority. So if somebody gives somebody authority, there has to be two people. Right. But we just understood that uh, 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 the, 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 the bet had the elephant tie brought forth the elephant tie. But we know that is the image of the family. But we also know that for somebody to give, I mean, that's just common sense in Daniel. It said that he was given authority from him. So so basically, in i.e., our father, our heavenly father, gave authority to the rush, the head, the cornerstone, the chief, uh, head, who 
according to what we just read in, in Genesis, is also Yahuwah too. And we're going to break down what that name Yahuwah means. It's also Yahuwah too, right? Now, and, and Yahuwah shall be sovereign over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Yahuwah and his name one. Oh, man. So this is a future prophecy that will happen. And it's talking about Yahuwah shall go forth, you know. Because remember, Yahuwah was on earth that one day. But this this it, this is going to get tricky because now, uh, you know, we, re we can read in Exodus where it said, where he told Moses, uh, no one can see his face and live. But hold up, Abraham seen his face. So how can nobody see his, how can nobody see the face of Yahuwah and live? But Abraham was talking to him face to face. We just seen it, we just read it. But we understand that there there is, it depends on who is talking. Right? It depends on who is talking because remember, if there is two Yahuwahs, and there are, then that means that they both dialogue and have a question. They're not robots. You know what I'm saying? They're not robots. They have just like how we have personalities. We can we can think and move. You don't think they can talk? How do we know this? How do we know that there are two Yahuas in Shemaim that dialogue and talk together, and they have conversations? How do we know this? Let's go to Psalms 110. Let's go to Psalms 110. Psalms 110 verse 1. Yahuwah said to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool for your feet. Yahuwah sends mighty scepter out of Zion, ruled in the midst of your enemies. This all goes back to Daniel, to rule in the midst of your enemies. He's going to give them authority to kingdom. So basically right here, the father is talking to his son. In saying, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So he makes that prophecy and Daniel comes come to pass. Uh, your people will volunteer in that day of your might. In the splint of your set apartness. From the womb, from the morning. From you, it says, you have the dew of your youth. You who has sworn and does not relent, you are a priest forever unto the order of Melchizedek. So we just talked about, all these things are fitting together now. It's coming together because we just talked about how this rush was his chief cornerstone, how the cornerstone was a priest, and now the father is saying that to his son that you, you are a priest forever unto the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek means the king of righteousness. Who is the king of righteousness? The father is the king of righteousness, so it is according to the order of the father. So guess what? The rush, now the head of the house that is in the bet, is a priest forever unto the father. Ooh. So you got to get to the priest or the head of the house in order to get to who? To the father. Oh, man. Here we go. It says, Yahuwah at your right hand, smite your enemies in the day of your wrath. That sounds a lot like Zechariah 14. It just talked about him coming and smiting, the, smiting his enemies and, and shall fill the nations with dead bodies. And shall crush the head over the mighty of the earth. This goes back to Daniel 2, chapter 2. So we're going to pause there. We're going to pause there and understand that, okay, so this person who was the head of the house in Shemaim, who is given authority, is going to come and, and be that rock to crush all these kingdoms, to set up his own kingdom that's going to be everlasting, right? And, the, and he is the priest unto the father of and it seems to be I mean this is context of common sense that it seems to be that the of or father is so great that nobody has technically really ever dealt with him directly because he told Moses no one could see his face so we, and we just read that there is conversations happening in heaven, and there's other scriptures of conversations that are happening in heaven from a father and a son. They're having a, they're having a talk. They're counseling with them within themselves. So let's break it down. So the name of Yahuwah, which has been confusing. We're going to talk a little plainly now. 
because I'm trying to speed it up. The name of Yahuwah is brought into three parts. Who was, who is, who is to come, the Almighty. Yahuwah, meaning that, meaning that he will be who he will be. What did he tell Moses? Look at it right here. He told Moses that he will be who he will be. First he asked him, well, who was the name? He said, Haya, which meant I am. Then he broke him further. He said, he said, Haya, Asha, Haya, which means I am that I am. Then the last level of the three levels, uh, he said, Yahuwah, which encompasses what you see here. So in your, the name of Yahuwah means the all essence of him, the greatness of power. And so basic, ancient believers understood that when you call and you say the name Yahuwah, you're talking about the whole essence of him in his power. Uh, that means father and son, uh, that, 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 that mean, which is encompassed also in, with the Ruach. So you're talking about the fullness in the I am that I am, the, the, the one that exists. He, he's so great that a name can't really box him in like that. He just got to say he exists. <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's what you know about him. You, he exists. He, he, he is that he is, which is, which is, you know, mind boggling in itself. So when you say the name Yahuwah, you are not just talking about Av. You are talking about the rush too. You're talking about the sun. Because we just seen that it's saying father and son. Now, here's the thing. What's confusing a lot of people is that the father wanting to, is, uh, uh, to esteem his son, the rush, the cornerstone of the house, he gave him a name that is above all names. So he gave him a name separate that was pronounced to the son being Yahusha. And we can go into the scriptures and we can look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, but right now we don't have we don't have that time. But he gives him the name Yahusha, which means Yahuwah saves. Right? And so what that means is Yahuwah saves, meaning not just the father of, but also the son, because the son came in the physical form to uh, 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 do uh, you know for for the sacrifice? So we're not going to get too much into that. But what I, what the lesson was showing is is that people you have people that are believing and then they say they believe in Yahuwah, but in their mind they are equating equating the name of Yahuwah to just mean the Father, and it's much more powerful than that. It is it is it is it is the essence of his existence, which is his son, which is the the uh, also the ruach. It is it is a, a chakma, uh, the feminine power. It is the essence of Elohim when you call upon the name. That's why back in the day, they were very they didn't treat the name as common and to just say it uh, out loud because they understood that what that what you are uh, insinuating when you when you say Yahuwah. So in this designation time, in the esteem and honor of the rush, the head of the house, the cornerstone, we are calling upon Yahushua. Of course, people are going to debate whether he, you know, whether he came. And of course, we know, according to the commandments, there shall be no other mighty one against the face of Yahuwah. Also, there shall be no graven images that shall be made in the likeness of anything that is in the heavens. So you have on earth. There are images that come from Zeus, you know, to that is being depicted as the Messiah, um, and which is in the English, Jesus Christ. We know that that's not the original name of the Messiah. That was uh, construction of the Greek, Latin, um, and English. Uh, perversion and also from s the images of Caesar Bajer we know these things and we know that these are corruptions and they break the commandments of Yahuwah so we need to get this correct that we uphold the Torah we uphold the statutes laws and commandments and walk in the Ruach and the power of the Ruach to walk in 
the fullness of the Torah. However, we are not uh, ignorant of the devil's devices to uh, get people to disdain the truth that is covered in feces. It's 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 almost like it's almost like if if if, if someone had a, a a diamond, let's just say they had a box of diamonds, right? But the box of diamonds was covered in manure. Would you take the manure? Would you take the box or whatever it was in and wash it off and get to the diamonds? Or would you just say, oh, well, they got manure on it, so I ain't going to mess with it. You know, if you were smart enough, you know, you, you, you could deal with the stink a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Wash it off. But when you get to that treasure, you got it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the enemy is trying to do with all these false images and stuff to get people to disdain the truth um, by covering it with feces. It's, it's, it's the same theory as people and, you know, whether people are in, in, in Egyptian history, they'll go out and say, um, well, you know, you had these people, you know, this guy in Egyptian history said that, you know, he had 12 disciples and all this other stuff. And so the, the enemy is crafty. You know, so it, 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 it is taking something that was true and then turning it, you know, evil and pagan and then getting people to disdain um, the truth. But it is it, it is hidden by falsehood. Does that make sense? It doesn't make it doesn't make the truth false. You know what I'm saying? It makes it, it, it the, the lies are always lies. But sometimes the, the, the perspective of the, uh, the, 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 the person looking at it is off. Just like I, I, I like to say sometimes the, the scriptures are not, you know, I mean, the scriptures and translations, translations are and have been corrupted. But the original intent in the original scriptures were delivered to us by the Royal Hakkadesh and there is no error in that. So, so in a sense, the scriptures is, is like a, you know, this, this book with, that has dust on it, you know, and it has some distortion and the pages are kind of, you know, ripped and you can't hardly read this, you know, can't hardly read that. And you have to seek to get through the madness. However, if you do your studies and, and, and the Ruach show you that all the prophecies lead to 2000 years ago of the rush coming upon earth and doing what he did, right? And so what people are now doing, they are now dishonoring the head of the house. And somehow we just see that all authority and all these things of which the whole house is exalting this head of the house. And people think that they're going to enter the house. They're going to knock on the door. They're going to get through the back door. Or somehow they're going to get in the house to the off, to the father without going through the head of the house. And it is impossible. It's not going to happen. So. Basically, when you and that's what goes back to what David said, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief stone. So if you would reject the first brick, the first cornerstone, which holds these two poles together, you have rejected the whole scripture. So if you reject Yahusha, you rejected the whole scriptures. There is no uh, there is you don't even believe anymore. You are reprobate. You're done. You don't even believe in the father. You don't have the son. You don't have the father. And so and so so this is and this scene in the Hebrew. So this is what I'm saying. Is people are dishonoring the house. And so right now, Yahushua, when he came upon earth, he declared the father because nobody had ever been acquainted with him directly. Because throughout history, we have been dealing with the head of the house because all authority has been given to him. So we have been dealing with him the whole time. Uh, uh, through proxy of uh, of of the Ruach HaKadosh in him physically just like our bodies our bodies are the temple just like you have your brain your brain is the greatest thing you know one of the greatest things in your body but then you have your word which connects even what you are hearing today which you have to have the Ruach to even speak the word so it's it all fits together into one being and people are not understanding Deuteronomy chapter 6 when it says Hero Yashrael 
Yahuwah, your Elohim, is a chad, is one. Just like when you go back and you go back to, to, to Genesis, you said the two shall become one flesh. No, they weren't. They didn't. They didn't mesh into one person like it did. Just they didn't morph into one person. No, they were two people, but they were hot. They were in oneness, meaning that the Father agrees with the Son. The Son agrees with the Father, and the Ruach Hagadesh serves them. Right. So, so this is what it's talking about: the Akad, the oneness. So that that is how you can have, uh, 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 in a sense. Yahuwah the Father and Yahuwah the Son and Yahusha being Yahuwah right? because he is part of the essence of the totality of greatness of the power of Elohim, the mighty power so we're, so we're living in the time where we are to proclaim the head of the house who is going to fulfill the prophecy of Daniel, who is going to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah so without people acknowledging him and somehow talking about uh, 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 just the Father, they error. Because the disciples in the people of the early centuries, you know, people say, oh, it's a conspiracy and all this. That's a whole other conversation. Because, you know, we could debate a thousand years about that. But this is the people that have ears to hear. Is that we can see that Yahushua when he was on earth, after the disciples left, they understood in the Ruach HaKadosh. Because you can't even you can't even receive the Ruach HaKadosh. You can't go through the head of the house. Because think about it. If Chakma, the Ruach HaKadosh, is in the house, and the head represents the house, you have to go through the head of the house in order to get into the house. So how can you receive Chakma, the Ruach HaKadosh, the counselor, without going through the head of the house? It's impossible. Because the good news was, um, in that time, and still is, is to repent for the kingdom of Yahuwah draws near, and to believe upon Yahusha, who died and resurrected three days later for the forgiveness and the remission of sins and defeating death. Because without, without Yahusha doing what he did in accordance to the prophecies, we don't have an official legal defeat of Shatan. So when people are denying Yahusha, they are they are for they 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 are esteeming Shatan because they're basically saying that the works of the devil have not been destroyed, and so Yahusha came to destroy the works of the devil legally because just like when you go back, Adam and Hawa legally gave the deed of the earth unto Shatan by disobeying the Torah. That was given to them from Yahuwah. So, what happens is, is now, this, this this head of the house is who we are proclaiming. This is what the disciples were proclaiming. And so the people who may have been on the fence or you don't understand or, under, you know, we are to proclaim Yahushua, him impaled, him resurrected, the head of the house. In order to get people into the house. Right? Because he is what, he, he is what, Heaven has exalted. The Son exalts the Father, and the Father exalts His Son. Which goes back to understand that when we, we hear in the Buddha Hadashah, where it says He has been given a name above all names, because He exalted His Son. That's just like, this is like today, like, you want, you know, a father wants his son to be uh, uh, greater than him. Even though, even though the Father is greater than him because He, he gave life to him, he wants his son to, to, to excel and to put him out there so people can be like, oh, yeah, that's my son. You know what I'm saying? He wants to be proud. And, to, and so we think that we just have these feelings because they just come from just the air. You know, no. We are made in the likeness and image of Yahuwah, of Elohim. So with that being said, I hope this was able to strengthen your faith. I hope, I hope this... You know, gave you insight on to what the good news is about, because people are not receiving the ruach. People are denying the head of the house, and somehow think that the father is going to accept them. We are to proclaim 
Yahusha because this prophecy of Zechariah is true. Is we are calling upon Yahusha because he had given, he had been given a designated name in honor of what he would do and who he is and in the title and the the strength and the power and the authority that he was given. But there shall be one day where we shall no longer call a, uh, him Yahusha. We will call him Yahuwah. Which, which hence is the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 14, where it says that there shall be one Yahuwah in his name, one. And there shall be one Yahuwah, meaning he shall be in Hod. He shall be, their, 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 their mission shall be in the fullness of what, it sh of, of what it was supposed to be. And there shall be, there shall be, his name shall be one. So we, so we will no longer uh, uh, use the, the, the title that has been designated. So we are to use the title of Yahusha and to proclaim Yahusha until the prophecy of Zechariah 14 is fulfilled. Then we shall no longer uh, 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 call that. But people are now specifically saying Yahuwah and they are acquainting in their mind that this is specifically Av or the Father and not understanding that it is the essence of who it's father and son. So there's Yahuwah the father, Yahuwah the son, and, and the son is Yahuwah. And he helped save. So people don't understand that they, people don't understand that they work together. You know, that people don't understand that they they work together in unison. That's their chad. That's their oneness. And so I hope this was able to strengthen you to get you to because nobody really breaks down the good news. We are to. Uh, uh, preach Yahusha and to talk about what he did um, the, the, his, his death, burial, and resurrection defeating the works of the devil giving us power and access as the head of the house to receive Kahakma into our beings the Ruach HaGadesh into our beings to have power over sin and death just as he did but if you don't have the Royal Haggadah, you can't defeat sin and death. So, and there's no way around it. That's how the house is set up. So, that's the good news. Is we are to preach Yahusha. We are to preach him impaled. We are to preach him resurrected. Defeating the devil, Shatan. Because when somebody gives their life to Yahusha, people don't understand about the legality of the kingdom of Yahuwah. And also how... Uh, 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 the kingdom of Yahuwah and how Yahuwah's system works and how Shatan uh, uses this th 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 this system because he also has to uh, obey uh, Yahuwah but the system is based upon legality so if you don't know Yahushua and you're operating in sin and death you are legal property just like in today they have deeds you are legal property of the devil if you don't accept Yahushua as who he said he was and what happened, you're still legal property of the devil. I don't care if you say Yahuwah. I don't care if you say Yahuwah. You're still legal property of the devil. And until you are able to give your life to Yahushua to legally, that's why it says confess with your mouth, because when the confession of your mouth, your being believes in, in, in truth, and you legally make the statement in court of law, in court of heaven law, as giving Yahushua the authority, the legal deed to your life. Therefore, after that, you know, if you need, if you're in need of deliverance, you know, as far as uh, demonic, you know, uh, demons living in your house, you would need to be delivered from that, and you need to be, you need to be cleansed, and you need to be filled with the Ruach Hakodesh to seal you and to cover you with the blood of the Lamb, in order for you to. Uh, for those forces not to come against you again. And you are now able to have power to walk in the Torah and the statutes and commandments. But a lot of pe people out here in the Israelite community are just preaching, oh, you just got to do the statutes and commandments. This is not the good news. This, the good news is not through the statutes and commandments. It is to have faith and to give your life to Yahushua, to receive the Royal Hakadesh. Uh, uh, to, you know, of course, to repent from your sins and, and to believe upon Yahushua to receive the Ruach HaKadosh so you have power to be witnesses 
and then keep the commandments. This is the good news. But the good news is turning into basically like a self-righteous, you know, justification by the law. And this is what the early assembly and early believers were fighting against. They were fighting against the justification of doing the law. So I want to 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 to, to lift the name of Yahushua up, the head of the house, to let people know that it hasn't changed. The the good news hasn't changed. We are to and preach Yahushua impaled, him resurrected, defeating the works of the devil, for, so people can receive the Ruach HaKadosh, Kahakma. Uh, if anybody else brings some other good news, some other thing, some other doctrine, because that is the first. The first thing is before we talk about statutes and commandments, you have to have faith first to have the, to have the legal exchange to come out of the kingdom of darkness and to be um, come to the kingdom of light. And you have to receive power. Because, because if not, you are doing, you are trying to save yourself. And when you get to the, when you get to the end, you, who is going to acquire uh, 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 some, some, you know, just like it says in, Levit in, in Leviticus chapter, I believe it's 17, don't quote me, but you're going to need some kind of something to atone, to cover your sins. You're going to need something to cover your sins. And this is what the head of the house, the rock, that intermediary, that priest of Melchizedek has done for us. That we just seen, he was in the first word, he was in the first two letters, he was there and we just seen so many scriptures. So that's it. I hope it strengthened your faith. And uh, if you if you got any questions, comments, whatever, leave them on the uh, you know the feed or whatever, uh, or you can just hit me um, and say what up, say praise Yahuwah, and let's esteem him um, for his word, and and so just remember that that. This is this is let, 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 let's go back to the basis because a lot of people came out of Christianity and we have so much hatred for Christianity. We know that there's images, you know, that are incorrect. There's holidays and you know all these things that we know about the name of the, the name of the Messiah. But people have thrown away the the, the baby with the bathwater uh, uh, because um, they have they have you know the enemy has tricked them to throw away the whole thing. But no. It's valid. All the prophecies talk about the head of the house, the stone, the one who was given authority, who was going to come and going to go rule. Everything points to him. So if anybody's talking about anything else, I don't even care if they're talking about Yahuwah. If you don't, if you don't, because you can deny Yahushua. If you deny him before men, he will deny you in the front of the presence of the Father. So if you don't, if you don't proclaim him, if you don't proclaim him in front of men, if you're scared to claim, claim in front of the men, you deny him. Um, if, 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 if you uh, walk in hypocrisy, you deny him. You know, if, if you, um, you know, don't believe he came into the flesh, you deny him. And therefore, on those levels, you know, you will be denied. If, 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 if you never repent, you will be denied in front of the Father. Because you're going you're gonna to have to meet the head of the house. It's right there in the scriptures. You knock on the door, the head of the house coming out, yo, what's up? <laughs> you can't even get into the father. You can't even get to uh, Hakma. He like, yo, what's up? He coming to the house, yo, what's up? He like, what? and just like it is, there's, there's, a, there's a parable. We can bring the bread out of shy. There's a parable where he talks about that. People going to be knocking on the door, he going to be like, yo, I don't know you. <laughs> That's what he going to be saying, like, yo, I don't know you. Who, like, who are you going to look to? Yo, yo, I don't know you. Don't come knocking on the door. And he was given authority from his father. So how much more so is the father great? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think about that. How much more so is the father great? Even so much more so that Revelation talks about that we got to be prepared a thousand years to get ready to even meet the father who no person has ever been acquainted with directly. We have, we have dealt with the head of the house, the intermediary, the cornerstone. So man, Please 
I'm try, I, I, I try to, I try to leave like, I try to shut it down like times, but it's, you know, the screw is still flowing. But, um, you know, please share this, you know, please share this, please inbox this to people, please put it on your wall, please do whatever, man, to get this out because there is, there is a spirit of the anti-Mashiach that is going throughout the, throughout the world and anything that helps us um, and as Yahuwah gives us to to strengthen our faith in the Mashiach in Yahusha um, will we'll, 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 we'll be powerful for us so may Elohim Elohim our father Baruch you through uh, the king the head of the house Yahusha and you be strengthened. Amen.